Brothers and sisters, praise be Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day, dear brothers and sisters. We come together to honor the mother of God. We come together to honor our beloved, beloved queen, our lady, her apparitions, her messages her presence. What a gift. Over 40 years now, God has sent his mother into the world to exhort us, to love us, to say, my dear children, if you knew how much I loved you, you would cry for joy. Messages of healing, fasting, prayer, returning to the Eucharist, so many vocations, so many conversions. I know our father, Dan Rehill, who was with us today, had a big uh, conversion through Medjugorje, so did I, to the priesthoods. Um, so many men have received their vocations through Our Lady. It is so interesting, right? It is so interesting. I, I, I love what John Paul II says. John Paul II says, Today's world has lost its sense of the supernatural, but many are searching for it, and they find it in Medjugorje through prayer, penance, and fasting. This is so important. This is so important because so often we are given a very compromised, lukewarm, watered-down faith. Unfortunately, in so many churches across the country and across the world, the message will be, be nice to each other and love each other. That's okay. That's part of the ethics of Christianity, yes. But what is the mother of God calls us to? She calls us to radical discipleship. She calls us to radical Christianity. Not Christianity light. She calls us to be disciples who can be so filled with the Spirit of God that it radiates from your being. You are somebody who knows Jesus Christ, not intellectually because you read the Gospels or studied theology. You are somebody who knows Jesus Christ experientially, personally mystically because you have studied in the school of prayer that is the Eucharistic Chapel that is Our Lady's message that says come back to prayer of the hearts come back to my son brother and sister you are not called to lukewarmness you are not called to a Christianity that's simply about et etiquette you are not called simply to treat Jesus as an ethical teacher. You are called to be a mystic. You are called to be a mystic who has deep communion with God. Very deep communion. I know certain people, certain individuals who have such a deep communion with God that when they go into the Eucharistic chapel, the tears just come because they are in the presence of their beloveds, the beloved who pursues their souls. They feel his warmth, they feel his embrace, but even when things are dry, even when times are difficult, they still show up because that is an act of love. You will be present for the beloveds, whether times are good or bad. That is part of sacrifice, that is part of the cross. Today's gospel speaks about entering through the narrow gates. Entering through the narrow gates. I love it. Few people enter through the narrow gates because it is too difficult, because it gets tough. I, want, I encountered someone recently, they said to me, Father, pray for me, I'm, I'm losing my faith. You're losing your faith. What happens? I asked. Well, I'm no longer feeling consolations in prayer. I'm, so, so, so you're going to leave the church? Really? You're no longer feeling consolations in prayer? Do you think that Jesus felt any consolations 
as she was being crucified, tortured, and humiliated for you at Calvary as the ultimate act of love, so that you may have salvation and eternal happiness, where a room is reserved for you in the heavenly kingdom with euphoric eternal bliss that awaits for all eternity. No, he did not feel any consolation either, but he did not abandon you. He stuck it out because he loved you. Love transcends feelings. Love transcends what is my emotion, my disposition today. Love is an act of the will. With love, mentally, we come back to the place of great romance, of great intimacy. What is that place? The greatest place of romance. I say this when I'm preaching weddings. I say to the wedding couple, I say to them, your greatest place of intimacy, proving your union as true husband and spouse, it's not going to be the wedding beds. It's going to be the hospital beds. It's going to be when the other one is suffering. When the other one is no longer as attractive as they were because of the pain, the mental illness, the Alzheimer's, the anxiety, the depression, the crosses of life that hits, who were the true disciples and the true mystics of Christ? Who were they? Was it the apostles? The apostles? Peter who said, Lord, Lord, I will follow you even to my death. Peter, on this night, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. The true disciples, the true mystics, the radical ones, were the ones who came to the cross when the world left him, when his apostles left him, when one of them betrayed him, when the head apostle denied him, those who came to the cross are lady, unconditional love for her beloved Jesus. She who would endure anything, anything to be in his presence. I love our lady. I love the mother of God so much. I love her so much. I, I could care less whether in this life I have any popularity, any respect, any attention, all I care about is to be close to my beloved Mother Mary and best friends. That's all that matters. Someone once said, there is greater joy, there is greater joy at the foot of the cross, suffering with the sorrowful Mother and the crucified Jesus, than there is in rejoicing with the great ones of the world. We must never forget the intimacy of the cross. We must never forget that in our suffering, he calls us to deep intimacy because Jesus Christ lives within you. His passion continues to live within you. When you suffer, he suffers. When he suffers, he took your crosses upon himself and your sins. But there's a connection here to how we sin. Our Lady said, one of, one of the visionaries from Medjugorje, she said to Our Lady, asking about some of the mystics, she said, Maria Pavlovic and Vitska, they, they asked her, can we read Maria Valtorza? Can we read the poem of the Man God? It's a beautiful multiple text documenting the life of Jesus from an Italian visionary. And one of the visionary experiences, and Our Lady said, yes, if you want to know, who my son is, if you want to know Jesus Christ, read the poem, the poem of the man God by Maria Valtorta. And one of the visions that Maria Valtorta had of the passion, it is so powerful. It speaks to this. Jesus showed her that he had to suffer in ways that correspond to our sin to make amends for the ways that we've sinned. So for example, because we sin with the flesh, he had to be crucified in the flesh. 
because we sin with our thoughts, entertaining, vengeful, uncharitable, lustful thoughts. He has to have the crown of thorns on his head to make amends. Because we sin with our lips, with gossip, with vain talk, with lies, with slander of another's reputation. He had to be struck on the mounts to make amends. Every single sin had a corresponding punishment that he endured for you, beloved soul. That he endured for you, dear daughter and son, because Jesus wants you for himself. And he says, I will take this upon myself. So I can see you one day in the narrow gates. But here's the reality. It means that when temptations arise, when there are temptations to gossip, vain talk, blasphemy, cursing, bring to mind Jesus crucified us. Mentally go to the passion. Mentally remember that when you are acting like this sin, you are striking him on the mount. When you resist, when you transcend the temptation, when you ask the Lord for grace, our lady for her help, when you use that fortitude to resist with his grace, you are saying, Jesus, I no longer want to hurt you. I no longer want to strike you. I no longer want to crucify you. You have suffered enough. Our Lady calls you, dear brother and sister. Walk through the narrow gates. Walk through the narrow gate because the gates of destruction is wide. The road is broad that leads to destruction. The world has taken it and continues to take it. But the narrow gates, how do we walk through this? First and foremost, it's your individual conversion. It's your individual conversion before God. And conversion doesn't simply mean, I hope I act a little better. Conversion, in the truest sense, means I want to be radically in love with Jesus Christ. I want to fall in love with Him. He is the spouse of my soul. I want to be good because I want to honor Him. I want to honor His person. I want to honor the relationship. It means Eucharistic adoration, so those rays of His grace may shine upon you and influence you and inspire you. It means frequent Eucharist to commune with Jesus Christ. What what a what a scandal it is! What an absolute scandal it is! that we have one of the greatest sacraments imaginable, the Eucharist, and nearly 70% of Catholics do not believe. Why? Why this tragedy? If I'm going to be honest, if we're going to be very honest, why it exists, the burden, a high degree of the burden, must be placed on us priests. So many brother priests lift up that host like it's nothing, like it's some cracker, like it means nothing. They do not teach about the wonder of it. People have no idea. People have no idea what happens at that altar. What happens in the spirit realm? What happens in the invisible realm? Mystics and saints have been present at Mass. And the Lord has given them a special grace that they can see in the spirit realm. And in the spirit realm, they can see that the angels are on the altar, the saints are on the altar, the mother of God stands on the right hand side of the priest, and Jesus Christ himself is present. I knew a child who would get visions during the Mass, this child. Uh, I believe eight years old, he would get visions during the Mass. He would see Our Lady by the priest at the altar. He would see Jesus. He would see angels. I once asked this child, where do you see Jesus at the altar? And he gave me an answer 
of such refined theological nuance, and I knew he does not have a PhD in theology, <laughs> that I was, okay, these may be very authentic experiences. Where do you see Jesus at the altar? He says, the, the eight-year-old child says to me, the priest becomes Jesus in persona Christi. That is what ordination is. But in that moment of consecration, the person of Christ becomes the priest. They are one. The priest becomes Jesus. And it is through the power of Jesus Christ that the host is consecrated. The bread and the wine becomes the body and the blood. How powerful it is. How powerful that you and I are able to mystically commune with our gods. Unlike our Protestant brothers and sisters, we're not just reading the Word of God. We're not just preaching the Word of God. We can consume Him. He enters our bodies, our souls, our entire being in a mystical embrace of unity and love and transformation because there are fruits from the Eucharist. There was a 20th century mystic, Therese, Therese Newman, she had the gift of inedia, the mystical grace of being sustained for a long period of time, consuming nothing but the Eucharist and having no malnourishment. She lived this way for 60 years, six zero. Some people were skeptical, so they tested her. For a two-week period, she was monitored in a hospital by doctors and nurses 24-7 with cameras, supervision. And at the end of the two weeks, they were able to acknowledge two truths. One, she consumes nothing but a Eucharistic post every day, not even one. Two, her body is not experiencing any malnourishment. Beautiful. Some people will receive that grace. Most of us will not, so don't do it. You'll probably start to. But some people will receive the grace. Certain persons are chosen by God for this special mystical grace to be a living symbol, a living message of the power of the Eucharist, of the presence of the Eucharist. Dear brother and sister, let us give everything to our Lord and our Lady. Let us give everything. They gave everything for us at the cross and at the foot of the cross. Totality. Totus to us. Totally yours, Holy Mother. May we be totally yours. To give everything means living her messages. The five stones, the spirituality, the five stones against your Goliath. Pray every day. Pray the Holy Rosary. Pray with the heart. Meditate on what you're praying. I would even say, pray the full Rosary. Four mysteries. That's what she eventually told the visionaries. So many, so many people say, I do not have time. I do not have time for so much prayer. And the visionaries explain Our Lady responds. She replies by saying, My dear children, it is not time that you lack, it is love. Because we always make time for the things that we love. And that's the truth. No matter what, what the distraction, no matter what the pleasure, no matter what technology, there's a lot of idols, pagan idols, that we put before the true tabernacle. There's a lot of false tabernacles that we worship. But we can realize that if we diminish that, those distractions, how we waste our time and say, Our Holy Mother is calling me to pray. And I love her. And she suffered for me. And I'm going to pray this one rosary because I want to intercede for peace in the world and I, I want to satisfy her. That is an act of love. That is an act of sacrifice. Sacrifice of your time for love. Beautiful reality. Fasting, fasting on bread and water. 
Wednesdays and Fridays. There are so many ways to fast. Could be bread and water, that's what Our Lady recommends. Could be liquid fasts, um, fasting from meats. I would really encourage some form of fasting of the body, corporal fasting. One of the stories that I tell is in my own Medjugorje conversion, I realize Our Lady gives the message, my dear children, live my messages and you will see miracles. Do not, and I cannot help you. And I wanted to see miracles in my life. One of the miracles that I wanted to see was in the relationship of my parents. My parents had a huge fight and a horrible marriage, a lot of animosity, unforgiveness, resentments. Eventually, after a big fight, one Christmas Eve, they stopped speaking to each other. A silent treatment that lasted for weeks, and then months, and then one full year, husband and wife under the same roof, not a word to each other. But it lasted numerous years. It became the norm. It was tragic. A satanic bondage over the family. Because he wants to corrupt the family. I started living the Metroya message. I had conversion in college. I started praying the rosary every day for them, fasting on bread and water for their reconciliation. One month later, my brother calls me because I was in graduate school. He calls me and he says, something strange is happening. I said, what? Well, they're actually talking to each other. I asked my mom, how long has it been? Because I have honestly lost counts. She says, six years. Six years. Husband and wife under the same roof, not saying one word to each other. It was a tragedy. Absolute tragedy. But eventually this madness becomes the norm and you just get used to it. What Satan held in bondage for six years, Our Lady destroyed in one month through the power of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are spiritual weapons. They break chains, chains that nothing else can break. Certain demons can be cast out, as the Lord says, through prayer and fasting. We need these spiritual weapons. This is entering the narrow gates. Most people will not fast because it is difficult. Most people these days will fast because they want their body to look better. Intermittent fasting in the secular world. But how much do we Catholics fast? We who have a God who died for us and our mother who suffered for us. How much do we express crucified love as an act of love that will bring great intercession to the world? Know that you are loved. The Eucharist, the Mass, part of the message. Make the Mass the centrality of your life. The Mass should not be an obligation. The Mass should be an encounter of intimacy. Do not, do not ever look at the Mass as an obligation. It is the place where the supernatural world penetrates with the natural world. And God himself gives himself to you and his body and blood in mystical intimacy. Confession at least once a month, to be cleansed of our sins, to be purified, to receive a new life, a clean slate. What a gift, what a remarkable gift the Lord gives us. And Holy Scriptures, to read the Bible every day, to meditate on the Word of God, to contemplate the life of Jesus, His teachings. How can we reflect Him if we do not know Him? How can we live his messages if we do not know his teachings, his parables, his miracles? Brother and sister, you are here. You are here in this time of grace, a time of conversion. A lot of people will say, what is happening in Mitch Boy right now? A lot of people will say, what's going on? You know? And all I'm going to say is visionaries are having apparitions, and you pray, okay? Because, yes, things will eventually happen, but the most important 
aspect that makes you glory God is your personal conversion, your intimacy with God. Because when you have a close communion with Jesus Christ, no matter what happens in the world, no matter what's the turmoil, whether it's political, whether it's social, whether it's spiritual, whether it's scandal in the church, your communion with Jesus speaks to an interior freedom that transcends these exterior circumstances. You simply need to ask yourself, am I ready? If I was going to die tomorrow, am I ready? Do I have intimacy with our Lord? He is your love, he is your spouse, he is your freedom.